Hello and welcome to CNBC TV 18 Newsmaker. Bajaj Auto shares have rallied over 55% this year, the best performance since 2010. For October, the company reported a 19% year-on-year increase in sales at 4.7 lakh units. And for Q2, Bajaj Auto posted a 17.5% growth in net profit at uh, 2,020 crores. Revenue growth was up 6% year-on-year at 10,777 crores. So what is driving the growth of the brand? How will the company step up its premium and EV play? And will CNG be the answer to growing the market share in the entry-level segment. Joining us right now is the Managing Director of Bajaj Auto, Rajiv Bajaj. Mr. Bajaj, let me begin by asking you the key growth drivers for the company in Q2. Uh, the stock has performed uh, exceptionally well. What are some of the growth drivers you see and uh, the drivers that you will continue exploiting in the coming months? Hello, Parikshit. Thank you. Um, you know, when you ask me this question, my mind goes back to what I think was the best decade for Bajaj Auto, which was 2001 to 2011, you know, those, those 10 years, that actually started with the launch of the Pulsar in uh, November 2001. So I, uh, when I reflect on that, uh, it occurs to me that we did some things really right uh, over those 10 years. You know, we introduced the Pulsar, which was fantastic. Um, it changed motorcycling in this country. Um, we introduced uh, KTM um, uh, to this country through our partnership with them. Um, we uh, acted upon the Chetak, which was the ICE Chetak at that time, uh, but uh, in the sense that we stopped uh, making scooters uh, in our endeavor to focus on being a global motorcycle company. Um, we expanded our three-wheeler, not only in terms of distribution, but also on the back of uh, new technology at that time particularly for CNG, um, because uh, it was led by Mrs. Dixit in Delhi, who wanted, uh, you know, Delhi to be cleaner. Uh, and then finally, of course, that was the decade when we uh, commenced on our export journey. I mean, in 2001, our exports were close to zero. Uh, um, and 10 years later, they were probably, I mean, I don't know, maybe half a million or a million a year. Uh, and the reason I give you these uh, uh, five uh, data points is because I think what has gone right for us uh, in recent years is exactly more of the same. You know, once again, uh, the Pulsar in its new avatar is doing really well. Uh, this time, as opposed to KTM, we also have uh, Triumph joining us. The Chetak is back uh, in an electric avatar. Um, the three-wheeler again on the back of CNG and now the electric three-wheelers is uh, really doing well, as you know. And finally, uh, exports after having, you know, dipped uh, a little bit, uh, slowly coming back. And as you know, we are the largest exporter out of India. So I think we are firing on all these five cylinders again simultaneously. And that's perhaps what the market is appreciating. All right. So you're saying uh, just doing what uh, the brand has been doing very well with the Pulsar, with the KTM, with the Chetak, with the Triumph, with the three wheelers and the exports. And that remains your strategy going forward. Uh, how has been the festive season for uh, Bajaj and how do you expect the company to do domestically in Q3, uh, also because of the wedding season? So, uh, as far as the festive season is concerned, uh, let me tell you vertical by vertical, our domestic motorcycle vertical for the Bajaj motorcycles. Um, uh, if I compare the October-November period this year uh, with the same period last year, because that would be a fair comparison, um, then... Overall, uh, the Bajaj motorcycle growth is uh, about 20% in retail terms. Um, and uh, But within that, the mix is very interesting. On the 100cc, which has seen a lot of discounting in the marketplace, uh, not by us, uh, we are actually down 10% year on year. So we have a degrowth of 10%. Mm -hmm. But in the 125cc plus area, uh, which we like to refer to as the sports motorcycling area, um, and which is the uh, area of our focus, uh, believe it or not, our growth is as high as almost 50% year on year. You know, so that's how the blended average comes to 20% or 22%. Uh, and obviously, this is very good for us because that's the area of our strength. That is more the EBITDA supportive area, if not the EBITDA uh, accretive area. Uh, and that's where our focus will continue to be. On our pro biking vertical, which handles uh, KTM and Triumph, also we have similar like 50% growth, uh, which is to be expected because there was no Triumph last year. Um, on the Chetak, um, you know, we have moved very strongly. 
uh, in, in the last two months from uh, number four to a uh, pretty strong number three position. And if you look at the Vahan data now, uh, as of today, mm -hmm. you will see that we are close to 15% market share, which was only about 5% just a few months back. Mm -hmm. So Chetak has done really well for us. Um, on the three-wheeler, we've had two months of record-breaking sale in the domestic market, exceeding 50,000 a month. Uh, I personally never thought uh, that in my tenure at Bajaj, I will ever see the three-wheeler selling 50,000 a month for almost 80% market share. Mm. And on the exports also, we have some cheer because, uh, you know, typically before the uh, kind of crisis in several global markets, mm. we used to export about 200,000 units every month. This had dipped to almost 100,000, come back to about 130, 140,000. And I think now we are going to see 150, 160,000. So again, you know, uh, very good news on all the five fronts in the festive season. I think this is going to continue uh, for the rest of this financial year mm. um, uh, in a similar fashion. All right. Uh, let me uh, also ask you about the Triumph. You, you sold about 8,000 units of the Triumph in Q2. How do you see the production ramp up, uh, the sales footprint of the Triumph motorcycles? Now you've got the Scrambler also in the market. So we are uh, taken a little bit by surprise, I must admit. Uh, we had prepared ourselves for 5,000 a month because, you know, uh, primarily the market leader there, Royal Enfield, is, is a very tall and very deep uh, brand. Um, and, uh, you know, all of us have tried uh, over and over again in recent years, but nobody's really been able to make an impact. Mm -hmm. So our initial capacity, as I had shared with you previously, was for 5,000 a month. Um, and yes, last quarter we have done, I think, uh, 8,000 totally. This quarter, I think we should more than double that uh, to about 18,000, which means an average of 6,000. So out of a capacity of 5,000 a month, we will hopefully be able to uh, squeeze out 6,000 triumphs uh, on an average every month this quarter. Not easy with all the uh, Diwali break, etc. Um, and uh, that is a mix of uh, both domestic and exports of both the Roadster and the Scrambler. And going forward, uh, you know, obviously the next stop uh, should be 10,000 a month. And I think we are looking good for that. Uh, I must say that apart from expanding capacity, we also have to expand distribution. Because as you know, Triumph has its own exclusive network. We inherited about 14 or 16 dealers from Triumph. I think we might have about 25 dealers now, you know, versus let's say 1,000 for oil Enfield or 800 for Bajaj. So, we still have a long way to go before uh, we establish the required uh, distribution footprint. Mm. Uh, so as capacity and distribution expand, mm. I think we will see this number expand. All right. Uh, so you're saying that you look to really double production and sales of uh, the Triumph from 8,000 in Q2 to about 18,000 in Q3. Uh, so strong numbers there. I'd like to ask you about uh, ramping up. Uh, sales of the Chetak as well, 7,261 units in October, 11% uh, market share for Bajaj currently. How are you working to increase the market share here onwards and some of the strategies you would be deploying? Oh, well, uh, as I said, we are now uh, averaging about 15% uh, market share at a Vahan level. Uh, I suspect retail market share is a little ahead of that. As you know, Vahan takes a few weeks to catch up uh, uh, with the with the retail data, uh, so the retail gives us uh, uh, a lot of confidence. We are now averaging about uh, ten thousand a month uh, on average. Uh, again, uh, we were constrained by capacity, uh, and uh, I guess the next logical step uh, for Chetak is, uh, I would say, uh, twenty thousand a month for a uh, let's say twenty percent share. You know, so. Uh, 2020 uh, should be uh, the next stop for Chetak. How are we going to do this? Uh, well, the old-fashioned way, uh, we have to, again, like Triumph, we have to expand production capacity, which should be done within this quarter uh, to the level of 20,000. We have, again, an exclusive network uh, for Chetak, um, and uh, we have to grow that network, and we are working on that. There are still uh, some large markets uh, where we are underrepresented. Mm. And finally, there has to be excitement for the consumer. Mm. Um, so um, I'm happy to say that very soon, by which I mean as soon as perhaps uh, next month, you will see uh, some uh, new products in the marketplace um, uh, under the Chetak brand. Mm. And uh, so certainly that should uh, you know, further... Uh, intensify demand and hopefully from January, uh, both in terms of capacity and distribution, we are able to do something more than 10,000 a month and we are on our way to 20,000.
Right. So by uh, the end of Q3, you're saying that you would have a production capacity of 20,000 units for the Chetak. Uh, that is correct. Right. Uh, in terms of taking the market share, uh, currently you've got uh, uh, Ola, which is at about 35%. Uh, would, do you think, uh, by when do you think you'd be able to probably reach a higher market share in the range of 30%? No, no, Parikshit, unlike me, you have not done your homework. Ola was down to 30% already in, in October. I think if you look at the uh, data, uh, again, I'm talking about the Vahan data, uh, which is available to everyone. Um, and uh, uh, if you look at the recent Vahan data, as of like yesterday or day before, uh, the data that I saw suggested that uh, the top three players had a market share of... Uh, uh, Ola 23%, TVS 20%, and Bajaj at 15%. Mm. So I think the top three are now pretty close. Mm. Uh, of course, this can change. Uh, you know, uh, uh, there is so much activity there in the market in terms of uh, new products, in terms of prices changing, mm. etc. So it could go either way. But as of now, this is how um, uh, you know the three stand in the marketplace. Right. Uh, in terms of exporting the Chetak, taking it to global markets, what's the plan? Mr. Bajaj? Uh, you know, quite frankly, I think Rakesh is in a better position to answer that. And uh, since he's been away for a, for a bit, I, I'm not uh, updated on that. I do know that uh, he has uh, two or three markets in mind. Uh, I don't think anything is concluded yet. But I will say this, that this is, uh, uh, you know, India is the most important market for electric vehicles of this kind particularly. Mm. I mean, uh, I don't know if you're aware that uh, apparently China sold 59 million electric two-wheelers last year. Mm. But then a lot of them were the small, cheap kind of stuff mm. that I don't think we really want to see in this country. Mm. Uh, so uh, stuff that is of the standard of the Chetak, by which I mean the design standard, the quality standard and the service standard for which the Chetak is being appreciated today. Mm. Um, you know, India is the most important market. So quite frankly, mm. uh, you know, even if we just focused on this market for the next five years, uh, that itself would offer tremendous growth uh, for this brand. So no immediate plans for exports? No. Okay. On that note, we take a short break, but don't go anywhere. This conversation with Raji Bajaj continues on the other side.